In this video, we are going to discuss 2020 HMIS data standards on permanent housing exits. The following is directly taken from the 2020 HMIS data standards and applies to all Texas Balance Estate permanent housing projects, such as rapid rehousing and permanent housing, regardless of funding source. The following slides are text heavy, but we'll also be looking at three different scenarios and how they play out in HMIS. This is taken directly from the 2020 HMIS data standards. If the client loses their housing situation and the project stops paying rental assistance, but the client remains enrolled in the project, staff should exit the client from the project with an accurate project exit date and destination and create a new project start date and a second enrollment for the client on the following day. The project would continue working with the client until a new unit is found, at which point a new housing move-in date would be recorded on the second project record. This will ensure that the client's history of housing is preserved. If the client moves directly from one unit into another unit with no days of homelessness in between, it is not necessary to exit and re-enter them because their housing move-in date would still accurately reflect the day they entered permanent housing according to that enrollment record. In general, if a program participant leaves their current housing unit, either by choice or due to an eviction, they may continue to be served by the project if and when they are ready for assistance, so long as they are still enrolled in and have not been exited from the project, and for rapid rehousing, have not exceeded the limitation of project enrollment. Eviction or loss of housing is not the same as termination from the program. An exit from an HMIS project enrollment does not mean termination from project services. Though an HMIS user might see one or multiple program enrollments and exits on the client's dashboard, that client may be continually receiving services from the project outside of HMIS, i.e. in real life. So what does this mean for HMIS? Participants in permanent housing components, rapid rehousing, or permanent supportive housing who briefly return to homelessness must be exited from the project enrollment in HMIS if all of the following criteria are met. The participant loses their permanent housing situation. The project stops paying rental assistance on behalf of the participant. The client remains enrolled in the project, continues receiving supportive services and the recipient intends to rehouse the participant. If all the criteria from the previous slide applies, recipients must exit participants from the current project enrollment in HMIS with an accurate project exit date and destination, and then the following day, re-enroll the participant with a new project enrollment and subsequent move-in date once new permanent housing is identified. Do not remove or modify the move-in date for the exited project enrollment. I think it's important to repeat this. If you as a recipient determine that your participant must be exited from the current project enrollment in HMIS based on the guidance given on the previous slides, and then the following day, you re-enroll the participant with a new project enrollment, do not remove or modify the move-in date for the exited project enrollment. Leave it as is. If a participant loses their permanent housing situation, but moves directly from one unit into another unit with no days of homelessness in between, the recipient should not exit the participant from the current HMIS project enrollment. Continuing to keep the program participant enrolled in the project would not require a reevaluation of their eligibility upon returning to a unit since they are still considered an existing program participant. What does this mean for record keeping? Participant records or client files are the primary evidence of participant entry into services, participant eligibility, service documentation, and when services end. Recipients are encouraged to maintain up-to-date, de-identified records of participants' length of service beyond the participant files in HMIS records. What does this mean for Fidelity to Housing First? 
Rapid rehousing and permanent supportive housing are to assist individuals who have not been successful at maintaining permanent housing on their own. Again, I want to stress that eviction or loss of housing is not the same as termination from the program. Permanent housing is the most robust intervention to assist those experiencing chronic homelessness and complex housing barriers, and loss of eviction of a permanent housing unit should not be the only factor when considering continued service delivery to this extremely vulnerable population. Assisting a participant to attain stable housing may require several rehousings. Let's take a look at some examples. We'll also go over how these scenarios would play out in HMIS. John Doe was evicted from his unit on 131-2020 and stayed at an emergency shelter. The THN PSH project exited John Doe from his current enrollment in HMIS on 131-2020 with an exit destination of emergency shelter. The THN PSH project intends to continue to work with John Doe and to rehouse him. A new HMIS enrollment into the THN PSH project was created on 2-1-2020 with a current location as emergency shelter. Then John Doe needs to be re-enrolled in the same program. If the emergency shelter that the client exited to also participates in HMIS, you may see that that client has an additional enrollment for that shelter. Example number two. Jane Doe was evicted from her unit on 131-2020 and stayed at an emergency shelter. Jane has chosen to remove herself from services and no longer engage or receive assistance from the THN PSH project. The THN PSH project exited Jane Doe from her current enrollment in HMIS on 131-2020 with the exit destination of emergency shelter. Let's go over Jane Doe's example in HMIS. The client will need to be exited from their permanent supportive housing project. Since Jane has chosen to remove herself from services and no longer engage or receive assistance from the THN PSH project, there is nothing further that needs to be done in this example. If the emergency shelter that the client exited to participates in HMIS, you may see, again, an additional shelter enrollment on the client dashboard. And last, we have example number three. Kelly Doe was evicted from their unit on 131-2020 and moved to a new unit on the same day. The THN PSH project did not affect their HMIS enrollment. Now, in HMIS, since Kelly Doe was evicted from their unit on 131-2020 and then directly moved into a new unit on the same day, the THN PSH project does not need to do anything to the client's HMIS enrollment. So it will stay as is. No exiting of the project enrollment needs to be done. We hope this video has clarified the guidance surrounding permanent housing exits. If you have further questions or concerns about this guidance, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Thanks for watching.